Geniuses know what that problem is. We have a recruiting problem. It has been years since we've had anybody in the game doing any kind of fucking damage. Can you tell me why that is? <laughs> to be fair. When have I ever been fair? It's tough out there. What do we do when we go out recruiting? What do we look for? Greed and chaos. Exactly. And rage. This is what I'm talking about. Rage against everything that is decent in this fucked up world. Do we have anybody that'll fit that bill? The Kardashian sisters. They're witches. Succubus. They can suck a man's soul and his testosterone right out of his dick. Look what they did to Bruce. They couldn't get the juice. That dude had potentials. Find a new Jeffrey Dahmer or Bernie Madoff. I know somebody. Somebody good. And what makes him a good one? He's got all three of our key requirements. He's a narcissist. He's Machiavellian. A psychopath? A dark triad. And he wants to be president of the United States which could set a new record for chaos. I like it. Who are we talking about? Donald Trump. <laughs> what? What's wrong with him? He's a fucking idiot for number one. He's perfect. He has no shame. <laughs> number two, three, and four. He's filed for bankruptcy three times. He's filed chapter 11, 11 times. Everything he's touched has turned to shit. If he didn't have a rich father, this motherfucker would be working at Popeye's Chicken selling that fucking sandwich to people. That's what makes him the perfect candidate. He wants to be president, the leader of the free world, and you... <laughs> you can make it happen. And just imagine all the chaos and problems he can cause. I'm telling you, he's our guy. If he does to the world what he's done to all of his companies. Minions, I think it's time to tune in to human internet. sexy, beautiful woman, or a cheeseburger, or money. You kind of remind me of my daughter, Ivanka. Whatever you like, Daddy. 
Not even I can make this fool president. You know, there's limits to what I'm capable of, you know. Ah, you're just being modest. I'm telling you, this kind of opportunity only comes up once every half century or so. When was the last time you had a candidate this built for mayhem and suffering? Ah, Hitler. But he was genius. Mad genius, but genius. Ah, he's so good. He's got more credits on IMDb than any working actor. He has his own network. They call it the History Channel. Trump is the king of chaos. You have to admit that. He does present a unique opportunity at this particular time. After Bush and Obama, America is ripe for a greed, racist-driven collapse. And Trump just might be our guy to push the whole fucking thing over the edge. Huh? Get Michael Cohen in here. Sit. Not very happy with you. Why? What's going on with Russia? There's nothing new to report. There better be something. I want a Trump Tower in Moscow. Russia needs a Trump Tower. It'll give them credibility as a country. I've run into a little bit of a brick wall. Nobody's getting back to me. We'll call Putin directly. Putin loves me. Tell him I'm thinking about him, that we need to get together. But we've reached out to him through third parties that are connected to him. And? <sighs> Nothing. Silence. We'll reach out to him again. Yes, sir. You know, two years ago, Putin disrespected me at the Miss Universe pageant in Russia. He said he was going to show. He didn't. Very disrespectful. So I need to make this happen. Yes, sir. I'm not hiring you to be a loser to make me look like a loser, am I? No, absolutely not, no. Then get the hell out of here and get it done. Yes, sir, absolutely. I've thought about it. And you may have a point about this little Trump guy. Thank you. So, let's try a little experiment, shall we? <laughs> you could consent, you know. That'd be easier than facing any more humiliation. I mean, you're three strokes down on a five par 18, and I got arthritis in both arms. I never concede, Rupert. You know that, right? Okay. You'd rather be bitten by a bunch of old cripple. Not gonna happen. <laughs> uh oh. Say, if you'd conceded, you could have avoided that. I'd never show my face in this club again if I had a shot like that. It's an embarrassment to the game. What happened? You hooked it, sir. No shit. I don't need your help. I can find my own ball. I need to help. I'm making sure you don't cheat again. It's a good thing your real estate game's better than your golf game, or you'd be penniless. But think of the bright side. You're three shots down, so this one's irrelevant. I'm not three shots down. I'm only one shot down. Three, Donald. Don't cheat. It's unbecoming. No, give me the three wood. Are you sure? If it were me, I'd concede. This is gonna get ugly. Let's give him a little help. See what happens. <laughs> what? In your face, Rupert. We're tied. If you don't make par, I win. And I want cash, not a check. You might be tempted to cancel it. <laughs> you choke, Rupert. You lose. Pay up. What did you do? Sell your soul for that shot? No, but I would have. I can't believe he's that easy. Let's go. How do you explain that shot? How do you explain that shot? I can't. 
I agree with Murdoch. He must have made a deal with the devil. Who cares? We won. <laughs> Tiffany, get me Tom on the line. Yes, sir. Tom, it's done. Need to make a move. Big move. Biggest move ever. That's really saying something, right? That's saying something. What's going on? Well, I can tell you, the last season of The Apprentice is a disaster. You know what kind of celebrities NBC has come up with? Gilbert Gottfried, Lorenzo Lamas, and Kate Gosselin. Who the hell even knows who Kate Gosselin is? Lorenzo Lamas, total loser. And that Gilbert Gottfried, what a weirdo. I don't even know where he came from. Some other planet, I don't know. I thought you said the ratings were okay. Not anymore, and I've got even bigger problems. I'm up to my ass in debt. Golf courses and the hotels are down business-wise. I'm getting sued by some idiots that aren't even smart enough to get into Trump University. I've got two morons for sons. Ivanka's married to an idiot who's running his father's business into the ground. I need a change, Tom. What did you have in mind? I'm running for president. <laughs> Tom, is that you? Are you laughing? I have a cold. Can I count on you, Tom? This is my best advice. Give some other reactions first. See what people say. Then we'll talk. Good idea. I knew I was smart calling you first. I'll get some feedback. Everyone will be thrilled. Everyone loves Trump. <laughs> I'm running for president, and I'm going to win. <laughs> it's very funny. Good luck, Donald. Because you're going to knight it. <laughs> oh, wow. You're joking, right, Donald? I never joke. You know that. I'm serious. I'm putting on the speakerphone. I have to get ready. Donald, I have to tell you something. Lots of people voted for you, and you're a fucking midget. When I was younger, I was a Boy Scout, something I'm sure you never were. I'm tall, good on TV, great on TV. You have zero chances of winning the Republican nomination. You look like you need a step ladder just to get up to the screen. <sighs> uh, good workout. Daddy, you're running for president? No way. Oh my God, that is so wonderful. I can't wait to run your campaign. Over my dead body. That can be arranged, believe me. <sighs> we have been bankrupt five times. Sometimes I wish I had you lobotomized as a child. Oh, wait, you were. Did you hear the big news? No. I was shopping all day. Big news, huge news. Everyone's very excited. I've never seen people this excited. I'm running for president. You're what? I'm running for president of the United States. You are not. I just told you I was. No, you are not. I will not stand for it. Does that mean you're moving back to Slovenia with your parents? That is not funny. I thought it was. You frightened me. This is a bad idea. I oppose. Since when do you tell me what I can and can't do? Since you tell me I am the best sex supply you ever have. Doesn't matter. I'm still running for president. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm very upset. And you know what that means? No. You will not be touching me, pussy, for a long time. Oh. Happy now. Good luck for president. Thank you for your support. Love you too. Big news. Tiffany. Get me Bob Greenblatt on the phone. Yes, sir. Hello, Donald. What can I do for you? How about what you have not done for me, Bob? You've not done anything to bring up the ratings on Celebrity Apprentice. You've done nothing to get me better talent. I mean, I thought last year was bad. Gary Busey, Meatloaf, and Andrew Dice Clay, they were the worst. But this year, Lorenzo Lamas? Nobody cares about Lorenzo Lamas except other losers like Lorenzo Lamas. At least last season, it was exciting to watch Meatloaf almost rip off Gary Busey's head. That was fun. We do the best we can. The show's been around a long time. 
The concept is a little tired. I'm sick and tired of your bullshit, Bob. I'm sick and tired of shitty celebrities. I need a change, and I want out. I want out, Bob. I'm sorry to hear that, Donald. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, what are you planning to do now? Besides running my global empire, besides being the biggest celebrity on TV, besides being the most handsome man in the world, a billionaire, and banging some of the hottest, I mean one of the hottest women in the world, you mean besides all of that, Bob? We at CBC wish you the best. And I look forward to finishing out this season. With a bang, Bob, a very big bang, the biggest bang the world's ever heard. One big bang. Come on, Donald. We've known each other for a long time. Don't leave me hanging out there like that. What are you planning? I'm going to run for president. <laughs> Bob, are you laughing? You stop laughing. I'm gonna get you, you better believe it. You're done, Bob. You're done. <laughs>
Unbelievable. Bullshit. It's not so bad, Dad. People love clowns, don't they? I love clowns. And the circus. With cotton candy. Cotton candy, circus. Get this moron out of here Dad. before I kill him. Dad, your blood pressure. All right. All right. All right. Don't be afraid. Go play. If you know you're a moron, you know I love you, Eric. Where were we, Don? Go back to the new site. Click on see pages four and five. Okay. Scroll down. Scrolling. Read the tweets. That's what they're saying about me? You have to know how the people feel about you. You know, I don't like talking about feelings. What do you think, Melania? What? Ivanka? I love you, Daddy. That's my girl. Well, I tell you, boss, he's the king of mayhem and destruction. What psycho would vote for this son of a bitch? You can get him all the votes he needs. If our people turn out, our people have this little problem called sanity, common sense. Trust me, boss, this may be the last opportunity you have. And he's vulnerable now. He can't tolerate humiliation. This is our time to move. Not yet. Why not? Number one, things are gonna get a whole lot worse for our little friend, Trump. Number two, I don't even know if I can work with this man. Come on, boss, you work with Charles Manson. Uh, Richard Nixon. Uh, Hitler. Why the hesitation then? Those three gentlemen had one thing in common. They were smart. This dude is dumber than dirt, and dirt don't think. I don't even know if this guy's controllable. When was the last time you ran into a genuine dark triad? Let's just see how things play out. We got plenty of time. Hell is forever. <laughs> if a guy from Kenya not even born in the U.S. can become president, you can too. Let's make some noise, Juice, huh? First man's gonna do it. <laughs> Suck it up, Don. Don't be discouraged. When the going gets tough, you get going. I deserve the finer things in life. I'm entitled to a happy existence. I refuse to beat myself up. I'm an attractive person. I'm fun to be with. What the fuck? Well, hello there, handsome. Mr. T. Who the hell are you? I am Billy JC. <gasps> Someday. You remember me, man, from your church. I have no idea what you're talking about. Church. I've never been to church. When you came in the goddamn church. Everybody cried because you wore a helmet and you were orange, man. You bumped in the shit. We thought you were blind. Really? Really? Look. I just want you to say these words with me, man. Look me in the eye. Say it along with me. I'm, I'm good enough, enough. I'm, I'm smart, smart enough, and doggone it, people me. like me. No wonder you got to buy a pussy. Say the shit again. Come on, let's do it together. I'm good, good enough, enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I believe that. That was fucking good. This is ridiculous. Am I being punked? Is James Cameron behind this? Nobody puts. Billy, JC, huh? Sunday up to anything. I'm doing this because I care about you, you orange fuck. Sure. Good. Now thank me. Are you kidding? I never fucked you, you little piece of shit, you. You fuck thank me, boy. I'll jump out this fucking window and I'll make orange you so your fucking ass will change the name to me. Thank me, fucker. Thank you. Now remember, everything is going to be fine. Everything is gonna be fine. So what do you think? I don't know, you on board? Oh, definitely. Now the real fun's about to begin. The next time I show up, I'm gonna be a guy named Epstein. Hmm. Serving up small children 
<laughs> on an island called Fuck them while they on the school bus. I used to live there. You lived there? Mm -hmm. Had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. No wonder your name is Shane. Thank you. That's a fucking shame. Mm -hmm. Anger, you know what to do. Come here. Ah! I'm here to see Donald Trump. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no, I don't, but I'm sure he would like to see me. Why would you think that? I know that to be a fact. I'm sorry, but Mr. Trump is very, very busy. You can leave a business card or a note. I traveled very far to come and see him. I must see him. I will see him. Please, don't be difficult. I'm asking you to leave. I'm sorry. It's not gonna happen. So now what? You're needed at the front desk. This gentleman needs to be escorted out of the office. All right, pal. You gotta go. As I was explaining to this beautiful, vivacious young lady here, I'm not going anywhere until I see Mr. Trump. Well, that ain't happening. So take a walk. I'd advise you to back the fuck up. Is that right? That's right. Oh. <clears throat> Eva, I see Donald Trump. Well, you're going to the hospital with a lot of broken bones, and I'd really hate to see that happen to anyone. Am I making myself perfectly clear now? Please do for Mr. Trump. I'm bringing someone up. Ah! Uh. Oh. Oh. It's the temperature to your liking. I'm Luther. Sorry to barge in like this, but it's very important. What the hell happened to you? I told you the pool's for family use only. Now I've got to drain it again. I heard he pissed in it. No offense, but I'd like to have a private conversation with our next president of these United States. Do you want me to stay? You're not here to assassinate me, are you? Don, hell no. I'm a huge fan. Okay, you can go. But if you hear any gunshots, you call 911 and you rush right back in here. So who are you? What's your story? You look kind of familiar. I'm here to help, Don. Help me how? Help you become president of the good old U.S. of A. Make America great again. You think I need your help? Motherfucker, you definitely need some help. So what kind of help are you going to give me? Let's just say I have the power to intervene in situations like nobody else can. Is that a threat? I have a very powerful personal attorney, Michael Cohen. Maybe you've heard of him. Absolutely. He's an idiot. You know, one day, Don, he's going to get you in a shitload of trouble. What kind of trouble? He knows all your secrets. I know, but I trust him with my life. Exactly. That's a problem. Forget Cohen. Let's talk about you. Give me an example of the kind of things you think you can help me with. Well, uh, do you remember this amazing golf shot you had playing golf with this little troll shit of a human being with the last name Murdoch? How'd you know about that? That wasn't your shot, Don. That was my shot. Or oh, how about the motivational speaker who likes to float above water and have wine on Sunday afternoons? That was me also. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. What do you think? I'm stupid? Don't ask me that question. I'm brutally honest. And the truth always hurts. What are you, psychic? A magician? Did you come from the Magic Castle? Let's just say I have a unique set of skills that you need. Skills, really? You know who you're talking to? I'm like the Wizard of Oz, all-knowing, all-powerful, without the curtain. Excuse me, Dorothy. It is precisely for those reasons you so eloquently just stated.
that nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, including your family, is going to believe you got a chance in hell of becoming the president. That's it. You're done. Get out of here. And what if I refuse? I'm going to get my big, strong bodyguard in here. He's going to rough you up, throw you out on the street. I believe that he's got track shoes on. He's going to run like the bitch he is. But fine. Take my car. When that one brain cell of yours starts to register sound in that orange head of yours, you're gonna realize that you really, really need me. And at that moment, pick up the phone, call. I'll be here in a flash. I could make you president of the United States. I can guarantee it. Wait a minute. If I agree to do this, what do you want in return? <laughs> we'll talk about that when the time comes. But in the meantime, you're gonna run into a bumpy next couple of weeks. Will that be you too? Oh, uh, no. It's gonna be the media mostly. Believe! Whoa. Pressure is mounting on Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump to release his tax returns. Even Republican members of Congress are now urging him to follow the long-held tradition among candidates seeking the White House. Last January, on NBC's Meet the Press, Trump told host Chuck Todd that he would be releasing his returns. Well, we're working on that right now, Chuck. I have very big returns, as you know, very big returns, some of the biggest returns ever. And I have everything all approved, frankly. I have some of the most beautiful tax returns that anyone has ever seen. They're like works of art. Now that Trump has officially declared that he's running, he's changed his tune a little bit. Joining me now is one of Donald Trump's biographers. Tom, you know Donald Trump as well as anybody. What do you make of his recent vagueness regarding releasing his tax returns? Well, first of all, Anderson, I do know him as well as anybody, but I know him better than most people. So let me just say this first. Pigs will fly before Donald Trump releases his tax returns. And why is that? Well, because then we'll see how corrupt he's been over these years, and the American people will see that he goes to great lengths to avoid paying taxes. Then why do you think he ever promised to release them in the first place? Because he's a con artist, and he knows that the people that support him are stupid, so they'll buy his story that he's avoiding releasing his tax returns because he's under audit by the IRS, which is not true. Just another Trump lie. Fake news. So I'm going to call it from now on fake news. Why you call it fake news? You know it is real news. You are just making excuses. Why don't you just read your stupid magazine? Fine. I go to my room and I go to sleep. Wait a minute. Hold it. OK. You win. I am not in mood tonight. I have bad headache. Headache? I just gave you $10,000. Fine. You know you're no different than a hooker. I don't care. Do you? No. Do you think I marry you because you are charming? Of course. Smart? Sure. No. I marry you to become a U.S. citizen, have easy life. And if I am your prostitute, you are my John, and you only last one minute. So now, we have sex. We have to do something about this tax return thing. The tax thing? The press is killing me over this tax return issue. It's a big surprise, right? You want my advice? It needs to be a fire at your accountant's offices. We could do that? No doubt about it. Great, then make it happen. How soon? Well, wait a minute. Are you nuts? I was just kidding. I'm not. We've got to do something. I'm not releasing my tax return. So just say that. Just put an end to the speculation. Great idea. I mean, who really cares whether I pay my taxes, whether I don't, right? What would you do if you were me? Honestly, I'd drop out of the race. 
I think you were out of your fucking mind to ever announce in the first place that you were running for president. Corey, I drop out. Really, that's the big advice I pay you for? It's the best I got. Sorry, boss. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I will not drop out of the race. I will not release my tax returns. I'm a winner, not a quitter. Are you in there? No, I'm not in there, you dumb fuck. This, this guy's fucking delusional. What are you gonna do now, boss? What I'm really good at. Turn up the heat. Dad, you gotta see this. Oh, I love Forbes. They love me. Is it good? Bad, Dad. Very, very bad. Is it the tax thing again? Worse. It's about our foundations. What's the headline? <sighs> how Donald Trump shifted kids' cancer charity money into his business. So what does the article say? It talks about St. Jude's Hospital Golf Course Tournament and how my foundation funneled all of the money back to the Trump Organization. Read me the worst part. All of this seems to defy federal tax rules and state laws that ban self-dealing and misleading donors. Is that it? It gets worse. The person who specifically commanded that the for-profit Trump organization start billing hundreds of thousands of dollars for the use of Trump National Golf Club in Westchester County to the nonprofit Eric Trump Foundation. According to two people directly involved, was none other than current Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. That's definitely the worst part, right? That's me. Let me read this. <clears throat> This maneuver would appear to have more in common with a drug cartel's money laundering operation than a charity's best practices textbook. Forbes said that. What the hell are you going to do? What I always do. Now has anyone ever met a Mexican they can trust? I don't think so. That's why they wear these hats. They can hide your wallet in here, your jewelry, pretty much anything. They're dope fiends. You really can't blame them for being thieves. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump went on an epic anti-Mexican rant at a campaign rally in Texas tonight, again calling Mexicans rapists and murderers while wearing a sombrero <laughs> and a serape. This recent controversy has silenced, at least for now, reports of fraud at the Eric Trump Foundation and money laundering at the Trump Organization. Am I a genius or what? Tension diverted, mission accomplished. May I get you something to drink, Mr. Trump? Not right now, Susan, thank you. Whatever you'd like, sir. Recent reports from Mexico reveal that Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto was so outraged by Trump's comments that he had to be sedated by his personal physician. Of distraction. Maybe he doesn't need me after all.
Oh, he needs you, boss. You just got to turn up the heat and it'll crack. I miss you so much. If only you were here now, things would be so different. Uh, give me a minute. Come in. What the hell do you two want? Turn on the TV. CSN. What is it this time? Just do it. The federal judge overseeing the ongoing class action fraud lawsuit against the now defunct Trump University has unsealed the sworn testimony of a former salesman for the real estate educational venture. And his testimony is devastating. Ronald Schnackenberg testified that, quote, while Trump University claimed it wanted to help consumers make money in real estate, in fact, Trump University was only interested in selling every person the most expensive seminars they possibly could. The affidavit concludes, quote, based upon my personal experience in employment, I believe that Trump University was a fraudulent scheme and that it preyed upon the elderly and uneducated to separate them from their money, end quote. As you might recall, based upon previous court filings, despite Trump University's claim that it offered graduate programs, postgraduate programs, and even doctoral programs, it wasn't a university at all. Really? It was simply a private company that claimed to be selling Trump's secrets to real estate success. And, of course, long before the fraudulent lawsuit was filed, many people were asking, who would want the real estate secrets of a man who had gone bankrupt? at least five times. Unbelievable. Other observers are asking whether the growing Trump University scandal will be the thing that ends Trump's candidacy before it even gets going. And of course, the irony of this news today is that the judge in the case, U.S. District Judge Gonzalo Curiel, is a Mexican-American. We all know judges are supposed to be impartial, but after Trump's sombrero-clad tirade against the Mexicans last night, who knows? Maybe this is revenge. That liberal left-wing bitch. You know, there's a time I would have banged her. Maybe set her up in a condo and nail her on a regular basis. She's got nice tits for broad her age, but now she's just a disgrace. I wouldn't touch her with Anderson Cooper's dick. Dad, you need to do something. The bad news, day after day, is killing us. And it's not just your candidacy. This whole thing's gonna start doing damage to the Trump brand, to our business. So if you're such a genius, what do you have in mind? I don't know. And it might already be too late. But you gotta do something. No shit, Sherlock. Bingo. It's time to go. <laughs> How the hell did you get in here? How the hell do you think, Don? You flew? Something like that. People don't fly. People don't fly. Get the hell out of here. That's just not gonna happen, Don. We're friends. You're my dog. Keith, get in here. What the hell are you waiting for? Get his ass out of here. He's trespassing. Uh, is he dead? He's just counting sheep right now. He'll be fine. Now sit down. Shut up. Pay attention. Nobody talks to me that way. Everybody talks to you that way, Don. You're just too narcissistic to hear them. Do you know why I'm here? Because you can fly? No, because you need me more than you did the last time I was here. Yes. You know, it's just a matter of time before your dream of getting back at President Obama for clowning the shit out of you at that presidential luncheon is all over. You know, he was really good. I mean, it was funny. Talked about your hair and how orange you were. I'm pretty tough. Nobody's tough enough to go through the Normandy storm bombing that you do every single day. Ha <laughs> ha, you obviously don't know much about me. I've been dealing with shit storms since I was a kid in the military academy. I thought you had bone spurs. You paid a doctor a shitload of money to get you out of the military. How do you know about that? I can take your powers of bullshitting down to a whole new level. So show me. Do something. A little experiment. A little experiment. I don't do experiments. You either in or you out. You know no one out negotiates me, right? You're correct. You wrote the book on negotiation. That's right. So are you in or are you out? In. Good. OK, listen. This morning, there was a court hearing in Miami. One of my painting contractors is suing me for non-payment for some job he did at the Trump Hotel. 
I need you to fix it for me. Is that possible? Done. How long will it take? Watch the TV tonight. That soon? I don't waste people's time, especially mine. So how much is this going to cost me? Not a dime. It's on the house. This one's on me. Oh, I get it. You want my soul. Soul. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that when the time comes, Don. You're not getting my soul. That's a deal breaker. I don't even know if I have a soul, but if I do, you're not getting it. You have a soul. It just hasn't been operational for quite a while. You're still not getting it? Fine. We'll take it slow and easy. My eyes worked a whole hell of a lot better when I was first cast down. The centuries, they pass so fast. Congratulations, boss. Here's to you and mayhem. A toast. A toast to my minions. Job well done. Drink up. Celebrate. Get drunk. You deserve it. Just like Trump, I don't drink. Now, who's got the weed? Roll it up. In other news, a Miami painting contractor who had just won a $120,000 judgment against Donald Trump for work done at his local golf resort was struck and killed by a speeding car this afternoon outside his office just hours after his court victory against the Republican presidential candidate. We have some breaking news that I think is going to shock a lot of people. For the first time since announcing his candidacy just a month ago, Donald Trump now leads the entire Republican field of presidential candidates. That's according to a new poll out tonight from USA Today and Suffolk University. What do you say now? I'm the front runner for the Republican nomination for President of the United States. I don't even know what to say. Of course you don't, idiot. Shut up and drink your water. I think he's great. Maybe we can go shopping for a celebrate. There's nothing more you need. You can take me shopping. There's lots of things I need. Of course, pumpkin, whatever you want. This is going to be great for business. The Trump brand will be hotter than ever. Everyone will want in on our deal. Did you hear that, Eric? He's the smart one. He's got the big ideas. He gets it. Can you rename the White House the Trump White House and put a logo on it? That's not bad. I kind of like it. Good idea, Eric. See everybody once in a while. He comes up with a bright idea. Makes me think he's not really a retard. No, I think he's retarded. So what do you think now, Rupert? Still think Trump is president is funny? Yeah. It's even funnier than the last time you said it. <laughs> a piece of shit. Now I think that the joke is on the country and the world. You know what, Michael? I think you need some of that growth hormone stuff. Then maybe you'll be tall enough to run for president. In the meantime, you can just be jealous. Wow. What a jerk. God. Well, surprise, surprise. So what should I call you? I've had many names over the centuries. Luther will do. You're doing a great job, Luther. Great job. I just made an amazing deal, smart deal. You want some chicken? No GMOs. Look, Donnie, I just dropped in to say it's time to step up your game. You're a master of distraction. I've never seen anything like it. You could fuck up and people think it's the biggest fuck up ever. And you've got one bigger loaded up for the next day. Distraction after distraction till everybody's just fucked. I love it. We gotta press the envelope even further. Build the momentum. I can do momentum. So this press the envelope thing, any ideas? How about flame in the fire with old John McCain? Now that would be fun. That would be fun. I can do fun. Do it. Mr. Trump, we've polled our readers, and this is the number one question they'd like to know. You're famous for applause lines, and people do love that. But referring to Mexicans as rapists? Referring to John McCain, a war hero, five and a half years as a POW, and you call him a dummy? Is that appropriate if you're running for president? You have to let me speak because you're interrupting me all the time, okay? Let's take John McCain. I'm in Phoenix. We have a rally that's going to have 500 people at the Biltmore Hotel. 
We get a call from the hotel that it's mayhem. Thousands and thousands of people are showing up three or four days early. So we move it to the convention center. We have 15,000 people, the biggest crowd ever, bigger than Bernie Sanders. And the people who show up at the event are incredible people that were wonderful, great Americans. I will tell you, John McCain goes, oh boy, Trump makes my life difficult. He had 15,000 crazies show up, crazies. He called you all crazies. I said they aren't crazies. They are all great Americans. He insulted everyone in that room. So I said, somebody should run against John McCain, who's been, in my opinion, not so hot. He ran for president against a black guy from Kenya, somebody who wasn't even a real American, somebody as illegal as a candidate, and he lost. So I didn't like him as much after that because everyone knows I don't like losers. But he's a war hero. He was a war hero because he was captured. We are just a few hours into a breaking political story with major implications for 2016. At a conference of religious conservatives today in Iowa, Donald Trump said Senator John McCain is not a war hero. The firestorm has been nearly instant, and it is intense. Our man on the ground is live in Ames, Iowa, with reactions from other 2016 candidates and also the prospective voters behind it. A defiant Donald Trump says he will not apologize for his remarks about Senator John McCain's military service. Trump suggested he admires veterans who were not captured over POWs, particularly John McCain. He was a war hero because he was captured. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush tweeted, Enough of the slanderous attacks. Senator John McCain and all our veterans, particularly POWs, have earned our respect and admiration. You believe this? Unbelievable. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, if there was ever any doubt that he should not be hashtag GOP standard bearer, his growing mountain of stupid statements should end all doubt. Unbelievable. Cox News. Oh, I love this network. It's always full of shit. I love this. I love this man, man. He, he's the king of mayhem. You think shit like that will get him elected? He definitely needs to clean up his act. But once he's elected, he's a dream come true. I mean, my favorite part of American history was the Great Depression. But when this guy, Trump, gets in the White House, oh, he could bring down society as we know it. I mean, all he really needs is just a little coaching. Got a nerve showing your face around here. Why is that? He gave me lousy advice. What are you trying to do? Sabotage me? The McCain thing. Good guess. Well, I told you to put a little flame to a fire, not set the whole fucking country ablaze. Well, next time you give me some advice, be a little more clear. I'll give you that. You're making a big mistake if you're gonna mess with Trump. Nobody messes with Trump. Really? Really. Don't ever forget who's in charge of this little production. No offense, but you're the biggest fuck up I've ever come across. How did you ever become rich? Oh yeah, your daddy made you rich. Your dad's little rich snotty nose brat. How dare you talk? Shut up, Angus. You serious about becoming president of the United States? I suggest you stop fucking up and acting like a lunatic. I'm counting on you. Uh, uh to do what? Make America great again, of course. <laughs> Donald Trump has reached another milestone in his quest for the GOP presidential nomination. According to a new poll out this morning from ORC International, the renegade Republican business tycoon is at an all-time high in terms of support from Republican voters. Yes, this order is very important, national security. I want a Trump taco bowl, a Diet Coke, and two scoops of chocolate ice cream. Uh, make that three scoops. Big news this afternoon, releasing my big tax plan, biggest tax plan ever. What's in it? I have no idea. My people say it looks terrific. Tax cut for the middle class? 
Ugh. Maybe, who knows, but it's a big tax cut for us. So you don't know what's in it then? Doesn't matter, as long as it gets rid of the alternative minimum tax and the estate tax. That way it'll save me 30 million a year and you billions when I go and you take over. That's great, Dad. I am so proud of you. I'm proud of you too, Don. Even you, Eric. I think I'm gonna cry. After initially pledging that he would self-fund his presidential campaign, Donald Trump raised more than $3.5 million from individual donors over the last two months. That's according to documents filed with the Federal Election Commission. When asked why Trump has contradicted his original claim to use his own money, campaign spokesperson Hope Hicks responded. Mr. Trump is just responding to the enthusiasm of ordinary Americans that wish to support him with their hard-earned money. America loves Trump. Look at her, Dave. Isn't she fantastic? Look at those all-American tits. They're not that big. Usually I don't like them unless they're monster hooters, but there's something about her. Maybe it's that her name is Hope. Quite frankly, I hope to bang her before this thing's all over. That's what we love about you, Donald. <laughs> How much money are we making on the campaign so far? You mean besides using campaign funds for rent here? Um, I'm not sure why. Remember I told you I was going to be the first candidate ever to make a profit by running for president. Now that the cash is flowing in, we need to maybe figure out a few other ways to generate some income, like charging the Secret Service to use golf carts and gouging the press for everything. My base loves it when we gouge the press. It's brilliant. You're a genius. Why didn't I think of this? Very good question. So go get me a cheeseburger. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this Muslim thing. Muslim thing? What, what Muslim thing? You know what I mean. No, I don't. How do you feel about Muslims? I don't know any Muslims. I think most people don't like Muslims. I know my base doesn't. They think Muslims are terrorists. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I'm not sure. But I've got to come up with a Muslim plan. I've talked about it. I haven't really done anything about it. I need to come up with a plan so everyone knows I'm on top of the issues. Hmm. Before a Muslim plan, I'm hungry. Can we have food? Do you want Indian or Chinese? Hello, I'm Gary Ward with Millennium News. I'm here at the headquarters of Republican candidate Donald J. Trump who's now making his bid for president. How are you today, Mr. Trump? Thank you for having me, Gary. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about your immigration policies regarding Muslim Americans. Now, you've suggested that maybe we should increase surveillance on these citizens. As you know, Gary, France recently declared a state of emergency, closed their borders, and ordered searches without warrants in order to protect their country. Do you think that we're in a state of emergency, and should Muslims in this country be subjected to warrantless searches. Well, we have to do something. Last Friday, 130 innocent people, good people, were massacred in Paris by terrorists. These people are animals, and we need to do something to protect our people and our country. What are the type of policies that you would have in place to protect our citizens as well as our borders? I'm not sure yet. Everything's on the table. We've got to keep our eyes open on all these mosques, see who's coming, who's going, be vigilant, and safe. So you've also suggested a Muslim registry. Would that be at the forefront of your policies on immigration as well? It's too early to say that, but as you know, Gary, in this country, by law, everyone needs to register their cars, register their guns and weapons, so why not our Muslims? Wouldn't that be eerily similar to what happened to Jewish people in Eastern Europe right before World War II? I can't comment on any decisions that were made by another administration in World War II. I can only comment on my campaign for president right now. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Trump, for the interview. I watched TV last night, and I saw our president talking about Islamic terrorism and the recent attacks in Paris. Didn't know what the hell he was talking about. He has no idea what's going on, and he refuses to use the term radical Islamic terrorism. Now look, we all know our current president is not American. He's from Kenya, 
Okay, so what the hell should we expect? Africans have no schools, no food, they live in mud huts, so let's give Obama a break. But I'm telling you, we have to do something about what I call the Muslim problem. And so tonight, I'm announcing that I'm calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. I mean, let's face it, folks, Muslims are not like us. They're deranged with all this jihad stuff, so we need to keep them out of our country. This guy could single-handedly start a holy war between the Christians and the Muslims. Besides not being a very good public speaker, he could rival Hitler when the time comes. That's only true if he wins. You really think he could win? You doubt me. No. We got a long way to go. But in the immortal words of Dr. Martin Luther King, we're gonna get to the promised land. What about we have a dream? It became a nightmare when I got involved. Don't doubt this guy. Don't underestimate our friends. There's a lot of good shit going on out there. Let's just sit back and watch it play out. He is the guy. Uh -huh. This is an interesting development. It's not your doing? Vlad has an independent streak and a lot of great ideas. I bet he's got something up his sleeve on this one. We'll see. You look so beautiful. What is it? Come in. Very good news. The Russians are on board. Great. I knew this would work out. Putin loves me, loves me. Frankly, I think he's jealous. So what do we do next? Putin has a whole bunch of the psycho bitches emails. When the time is right, they're gonna release them through WikiLeaks. <laughs> good work, Don. Let's hope they do it in the right timing. Timing is everything in life, right, kitten? You're always right, Daddy. Doesn't this ever get old? Never. I missed you. I've been watching, and I have to say, none. I'm thoroughly impressed. That was you. Made me bulletproof, right? What can I say? I'm a man of my word. I'm kidding. I'm tanking in the polls. Who knew? So what do you want? That's a loaded question, isn't it? I'm sure you didn't fly in here just to chit-chat. Of course not. So what do you need? Election nights in less than a month. And as of right now, you have zero chance of winning, even if we could stop you from sabotaging your stupid ass self. But everybody knows that's impossible. Look, Don, if you really want this presidential thing, I think it's time we solidify our relationship, if you catch my drift. I told you before, any kind of serious pact is off the table. If you want to help me, which, according to the past, haven't been helping me that much. But if you feel like you need to help me for your own reasons, that's your business. It's our business. What are you saying? We're partners? Well, not as of right now, but I believe it's time. Oh, right. The soul thing. Ah. Not happening. I told you. You need me more than I need you. We need each other. We have the same goals in mind, Don. And what is that? A positive, righteous, resounding victory. Somehow you and righteousness doesn't really sound that great together. You know, I can say the same thing about you, Donnie. No offense. You're wasting my time, Luther. I guess we'll see what happens when election time comes. In the meantime, get out of here. No offense. So that's it. That's it? No deal. No deal. Yeah. <laughs>
Within just hours of the release yesterday of an audio tape of Donald Trump making lewd comments about his offensive and possibly illegal treatment of women to Access Hollywood co-host Billy Bush, his fellow Republicans nationwide have loudly condemned him, with a number of them demanding that he step aside as the GOP candidate for president. On the tape, first reported by the Washington Post, Trump made shocking statements that many people now say have destroyed his candidacy just one month before the election. You know, Billy, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful women. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. Hi. You can grab anything. Grab them by the pussy. Reaction to Trump's comments has been swift and unequivocal. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice wrote on Facebook, Enough. Donald Trump should not be president. He should withdraw. Republican Utah Senator Mike Lee has also called on Trump to step down as the GOP nominee. And House Speaker Paul Ryan called Trump's remarks reprehensible. He abruptly canceled a rally during the Trump Wisconsin. This better be good. I've just been through hell. Congratulations, Dad. You've fucking outdone yourself this time. Huh? How come you never told us it's okay to grab women by the pussy? That makes it way easier to get laid, right? What are we gonna do now? Look, I already made a statement regretting all those terrible things I said over 10 years ago. The statement was great, really great. The story's getting bigger, not going away. Maybe you could just say that women actually like being grabbed by the pussy. That it's like a caveman thing. Well, that'd be cool. Shut up, Eric. Every time you open your stupid mouth, I wish you weren't mine. Wait a minute. The timing of all this is very suspicious. I think I know what's happening. So, put Michael Cohen on him. Have him bring in some of his muscle. I'm not sure that's gonna work this time. Muscle always works, and Michael can fix anything. That's what you always say. Right? Maybe not this time. You think you're pretty clever, don't you? You can't intimidate me. I'm the one who does the intimidation, okay? So good luck with your agitation and your Beelzebub bullshit. Fuck you, Luther, Lucifer, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. There's a reason you're in hell and you're gonna fucking stay there. You got it! Days after an old Access Hollywood tape embroiled Donald Trump in a firestorm, new allegations of sexual assault are being made against the Republican presidential candidate. Among them is a writer for People magazine who says that Trump sexually assaulted her in 2005 when she went to his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida to interview him for a profile. Natasha Stoinoff claims that after Melania Trump had left the room, Trump, quote, pushed me against the wall and stuck his tongue down my throat. Do you believe her? What is she, a two, maybe a three? Everyone knows I don't do anything less than an eight, especially if I'm married. Stoyanov's accusations are reinforced by the comments Trump made to Access Hollywood co-host Billy Bush, in which he clearly said he often kissed women against their will and grabbed them by their private parts. Last Sunday evening, after the presidential debate, I asked Trump whether he ever kissed women without their permission. I have not, Trump insisted. I always knew your dick would be the end of you. You're always jealous because I have more women than you. That's true. My sex is consensual. Not funny. But true. Have you seen her show, The Writer? What a joke. She's a total dog. Everybody knows I don't do dogs. Believe me. Never, ever, ever. Break me, you never lose, ever. I'm gonna 
I'm sure as hell not gonna submit to you. So bring it on! Give it your best job, bitch! What the hell happened, Michael? All these women are coming out of the woodwork. You said it was taken care of. I, I thought it was. So what happened? Look, there are only so many hours in the day. I mean, I'm focused on the most serious cases from the most recent past. I mean, I didn't think to go back five or ten years. You said this was taken care of. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess I misspoke. Well, you better fix this and fast. All right, what do you want me to do about it at this point? Put your finger in the dike. Are you fucking a lesbian? No, you idiot. It's an expression. You've never heard the saying, put your finger in the dike? I don't know. I just, whenever I hear that word dike, I just... It... Sometimes they think you're stupider than Don Jr. and Eric put together, if that's even possible. Now get the hell out of here and get this taken care of before I kill you and fire you. Yes, sir. Moron. It's Armageddon time, Luther. You hear me? You can't hold out much longer. Although I'd have to say, He's a little tougher than I thought he would be to rope in. But a couple of more real good shots right to the nuts, and we'll have him right where we want him. Now it's time to have some real fun with him and hit him where it hurts. This is Michael. Sangelo. You got a problem in the making. You need to get on it. Like now. Is this a Trump problem? A big Trump problem. <laughs> what else is new? What is it this time? Does the name Stormy Daniels ring a bell? <laughs> like a fucking fire alarm. What is it? She's preparing to go public about her night with shithead. I warned him that she was probably the worst mistake that he has ever made. Well, pal, you better correct the mistake. Quick. Capiche? Yeah, on it. This guy's gonna fucking kill me, I swear. I swear! Hey, hey. Hey, Mr. Davidson. You look great. Thanks. Yeah, come on in. So, uh, do I call you Mrs. Uh, Daniels or Miss Clifford or? Stormy. The only people who call me anything else are my mother and the IRS, and trust me, you don't want to be associated with either. I assume you know about me. You know, the kind of things I do for people. Your reputation precedes you. Well, I know that, sweetie, but why don't you enlighten me and tell me how you know that? We have a mutual friend who told me that you're responsible for the deal between Trump and the Enquirer and that playmate chick? Karen McDougal. That's the one. Yeah, I made her a lot of money. I'm guessing you want a similar deal? Not exactly. I was contacted by Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen. Never heard of him. Anyway, uh, in light of Trump's recent, shall we say, escapades, I was considering coming forward about a night of consensual sex I had with him. Golf tournament, Lake Tahoe, 2006. Stormy, if the sex was consensual, what are we even doing here? Well, because of all the bad publicity he's received in the last two weeks, Trump's pretty freaked out that if it got leaked he had sex with a porn star, it would be the end of his campaign. They want to silence you. With a non-disclosure agreement, I'm guessing. Now you're catching on. Okay, we got something to work with. So I'm assuming that you'd rather take the money than, uh... Than what? Let the entire world find out that I had sex with that? <laughs> Absolutely. And his attorney has threatened to destroy me. Well, you think they could actually do that? Duh. I'm a porn star. Well, is this Mr. Uh... Cohen? Cohen. Has, has he made any kind of formal offer in writing? He just said, find an attorney and have the guy contact him ASAP, so. The election is in two weeks. Hence the ASAP part. So let's just say that 
in return for me getting you the best cash deal that I can get. Are you willing to sign an NDA? You bet. And what if we can't make the deal? Then I go public in a very big but tiny way. And why would you say that? I can describe Trump's dick in perfect detail, so accurately that Melania and every woman who's had the unfortunate experience of being with him will know that I'm telling the truth. And it's not a pretty picture, if you know what I mean. I'm trying not to imagine it. Yeah, I think we're onto something here. I think me and you, we see eye to eye. And Stormy, I wanna let you know that I have your best interest right here. I bet. 130 grand, is that the best deal you could get? It's 20 grand cheaper than Karen McDougal, and it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper than some of the other broads I've been taking care of. And let me tell you something, this Miss Daniels, she's way more dangerous than any of them. Why is that? Because she's a porn star. Duh. She's willing to describe your cock in detail to the American public. Worse than that, directly to Melania. And then you got a far more expensive problem to deal with. So 130 grand, she goes away with an ironclad NDA. Guaranteed. What do you need from me? You pretend you're a guy named David Dennison. Then you reimburse me after I make the payments. Why can't I just write her a check now? No, no, we need to have a cover story, just in case. And that cover story, if we ever need it, is that I paid her out of my own pocket. And then I reimburse you? Yeah, through small monthly payments, you know, like a retainer's fee. Trust me, I do this all the time. And this can't come back to haunt me? Never. Don't mean to interrupt, I know you're eating dinner, but it's an emergency. Have a seat. You want some vodka? It's the best. I made it last weekend myself. Look, I've known you since you were a youngster in the KGB. You know by now I don't drink. What can I do for you? Donald Trump. Our presidential candidate in the U.S. election. I need to get his attention. He's a tough guy. <laughs> oh, you kill me every time. He's a fucking idiot, a fucking suka. You can say that again. But I use for suka. Are you going to recruit him to the team? I want him to be president for reasons other than your own. I want him to be president because he's not Hillary fucking Clinton. Hillary Clinton was quite an intellectual, fat, booty, white bitch. She would have fucked up my international plans for world dominance and confusion. What do you want me to do? 2013 Miss Universe contest. Prostitutes, golden shower, video on Obama's bed. Precisely. I like it. I show my friends. That's your business. I thought you said you want him to be president. I do. Seems to me you want to destroy him and humiliate him. Humiliation, unfortunately, is the only thing this idiot understands. He has one brain cell and is stuck on stupid. Have you explained to him the benefits? Benefits. You ask for all of this, you have all of it. I deliver. This one's a different kind of a brain. He's delusional. He thinks he's worth a trillion fucking dollars. He's broke on nine continents and there's only seven. Look, man, the election comes up in less than a month. I need to close my deal with Trump. I got the machines. You make it look good. You have my word. Okay. We work together. Now show me the wrong way this pissing took place. Yes? You have a call from a woman who says you know her. Does she have a name? She says she wants that to be a surprise. I don't like surprises. Get rid of her. No problem. Yes? She says the call...
call is very important. At least I think that's what... You're not sure? She's hard to understand. She has a very thick accent. Accent? What kind of accent? I'm guessing, but I think she's Russian. Did she say anything else? Just that she has a big surprise for you from your friend Vladimir. She wants you to come to see her and her girlfriend at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Put her through. Hello, sexy man. This is Natalia from Moscow. You remember me? Hello, Natalia. How are you, darling? Very good. I'm here at Ritz-Carlton in Washington with my friends. Alexandra and Olga. You remember them too? Hi. Of course I remember them. Who could forget them, yes? Certainly not you. <laughs> Mr. Putin sent us and he sent a surprise. You must come over. Uh, did he say what kind of surprise it was? You mean beside us? <laughs> don't play games. I don't like games. Remember game that we play in <laughs> Moscow? Oh, you must come over tonight. Mr. Putin insists. What you see is what you get. This is who I am. I'm sorry, ladies, I can't do this. No. Don't you want us to pee pee on you again? <laughs> no! Didn't I tell you not to hire hookers to pee in Obama's bed? But you couldn't just control yourself as per usual. I hope you're happy. I think I know what's going on here, and it's nothing short of blackmail. By Putin, that doesn't make any sense. He saved your ass by dropping Hillary's emails after the disaster of the Access Hollywood tapes. I'm not talking about Putin. All right, well, then who's blackmailing you? I can have him taken care of. Not this time. This is something different. You better wise up and face facts, Donald. You're gonna lose, and you're gonna lose big. I never lose, and I'm not gonna lose now, understand? Gotta tell you, Luther, really love what you've done with this place. Gotta give you credit. The Russian hookers and their big surprise was a nice touch. You know, you were a rough nut to crack, Trump. Just so we're clear, this deal is involuntary. Quite frankly, it's extortion. Exactly. What about the polls? The bad press, all the late night jokes. Meaningless. You know, the polls haven't been wrong in a presidential election since Dewey and Truman. There's a first time for everything, Donnie. So, what do you need from me? For starters, I want this inaugural to be dark. Very dark. I want you to make George W. Bush and Dick Cheney look like Optimus. Done. You and I are gonna have a whole lot of fun once you're on the team. What about Putin? Is he on the team? Putin is one of the star players of this team. I also got Kim Yum Yum starting at center. Once you're in that office, the sky's the limit. Anything else? That's it. The art of the deal. The art of the deal. Welcome to the game. Take your seat. Feels good. Very presidential. first words to the nation and the world after being sworn in as President of the United States, Donald Trump on Friday delivered a populist manifesto that depicted the U.S. as a wasteland of abandoned factories, 
Economic angst, rising crime, and dystopian carnage. Reciting a litany of devastating criticisms of the country, including gangs, drugs, crime, poverty, and unemployment. Trump told the nation, this American carnage stops right here. Left many observers with right one now. single question. Does Trump really hate America? I don't think so. Everything works out in the end. Plane train. Car wreck. Shoot your mama. Here's to our greatest accomplishment. A complete, definite, dark trial. How bad can it get? <laughs> bad. Very, very, very bad. Especially if you're Muslim. Asalaamu yeah. Alaikum. Yeah. Or you're Mexican. Yeah. Taco Burrito. Yeah. Or you're a Jew. Yeah. Some sugar. Yeah. Or you're a Negro. Well, I don't know. Or you're an African American. Yeah. Well, kind of logically speaking. Yeah. Or you black. Hey, dog. Everybody in trouble is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If you breathe it, your ass gonna get it with this orange motherfucker that I got. Now, more heroin. Keep it coming. Like some dinner, Mr. Trump? Sounds good. We have chicken. Would you like lay, thigh, breast? Better bring the whole chicken. on what is important. I set out to do what I told you. My father taught me not to ever show weakness to no one because it can expose you. Hoping that one day you take this life lesson and use it to guide you. Use it to mold you into something better like it is supposed to. Do something better because yesterday's old news. What you see is what you get. This is who I am. What you see is what you get. This is who I am. What you see is what you get. This is who I am. This is who I am. I'm brand new, like the J's don't blink. I'm in the gym all day, Kobe. Westbrook, popping clutch, OT, man, curry from the end of the block, so sweet. LeBron from the top, man, I rap like me. I'm an old school dude, but I fall in clean, so cool, so fresh, so mean. On the weight on my back, you know I carry the team, that's me. You know I bleed for my family. I'll take a bullet for them all, I don't think you understand me. You know I'm swinging for the fence when I'm batting. Nigging with the bat, I'm about to start cracking. I don't need a bullet, I'm already automatic. I don't need a clip, I'm already good without it. I don't need to talk, I'm already all about it. But I'm about to emphasize it to what you are doubting. What you see is what you get, this is who I am. What you see is what you get, this is who I am. What you see 